allows you guys to grow closer in a relationship as well as having God in the center of it too, right? But the two questions I ask is to the man, are you worth submitting to? And to the woman, are you worth dying for? Holy boy. Oh boy. So. (laughs) Yeah. But. Can you say that again? So to the man, are you worth submitting to? And to Alicia. Rory. It's long overdue. Yes. I know. I'm very happy to be here. Yes. Yes. Been months, you know? Yes. But we're here to talk. Mm Mm-hmm. Talk the good, good talk, right? The good news. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So let's get into (laughs) it. What's been, uh... What's been new and exciting in your world so far? Let's, let's, I want to warm up the audience here. In my world so far, um, so I'll just kind of cover the last mm-hmm. year. Uh, the last year has basically been a year, I would say, of breakthrough for me mm-hmm. in certain areas of my life, mm-hmm. um, in my relationship life. Um, this has been a year where God has showed me that it is okay to rest, to rest in him. Mm-hmm. Um, And through that rest, he's shown me how there's still work being done, that even in the stillness, he is still working in you, right? So that has been a big lesson for myself, um, to be okay with just being still and resting in in his peace. I love that you say that. Mm -hmm. The importance of, you know, why we're here, you know, I feel like it's going to be a powerful conversation Mm -hmm. about, you know, religious beliefs and things like that and all that good Mm -hmm. stuff and really take the conversation to a learning experience for the audience yes you know what i mean and things like that so let's get into it you know i feel like sin 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 and temptation Mm -hmm. there's a lot of sin and temptation out there Mm -hmm. why do you think that is well we can go back to creation Mm -hmm. right do you know what the first sin was you tell me. You tell me. <laughs> She's going to quiz me. Well, just based on your understanding, because I know you, you said you've, you're a raised Christian. Mm-hmm. So do you have any understanding of what the first sin may have been? I'll be honest. I don't, I don't no? remember. I feel like I can go in any different way. I could say, you know, like lying and like things like that. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I'll take you back to creation in the, in, in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. So a lot of people believe that the first sin was when... Adam and Eve ate of the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat of. That's Mm -hmm. where the first sin came in. That's what Mm -hmm. a lot of people believe. Mm -hmm. But when you actually read scripture, the first sin that had entered was when, I don't know if you know this, but Satan, Lucifer, was was a created um, angel by God. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, He was an angel, and he was created to be the most beautiful angel. And when Mm -hmm. he saw saw himself, and he saw how beautiful he was, pride got into his heart Mm -hmm. and through that pride that's where he wanted to be like god so the first sin would be pride right so um through that then he took a lot of angels down with him and that's where they're called fallen angels that's where demons came from right they were angels that basically disobeyed god because angels were also given free will Mm -hmm. right so they had a choice to either obey god Mm -hmm. or not to obey him Mm -hmm. so the first Um, sin is pride and then we also see that in the garden where adam and eve um well so god created adam first and god gave the direction to adam about not to eat from the tree of uh the knowledge of good and evil Mm -hmm. and so when god created eve eve was alone and that's when the serpent satan Mm -hmm. approached eve and started asking her questions and said and said to her Um, You know, if you eat from this tree, you will be able to see the way that God sees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she was kind of hesitant to be like, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. And and Satan is like, well, did God really say that? Placing doubt within her. And because of that, she chose to then disobey what she heard from Adam, who heard from God, and chose to do what she knew she shouldn't do, and she ate from that. So that was pride because it's a matter of what we want and not what God wants. Pride. So pride, that's yeah. where sin came mm-hmm. into the world. So let me ask this question, and I love what you said. It lands perfectly. Would that not go into a form of temptation as well? A hundred percent. Because through sin came temptation, mm. right? But you have to remember, too, that there's two different types of temptation. Okay. You can be tempted, but it doesn't phase you. Or you can be tempted, 
as a, a like where it will affect you. So and that's where being born again is. And that's why we need to be born again. Okay. Because aside from that, we are in our flesh. The Bible says is that we we want to do what is good, but somehow we just keep doing what is wrong. And why is that? Why are we constantly in a battle within ourselves? It's because we aren't being led by the spirit of God. So your question to that is where we can lead into being born again. Why do we, why does the Bible talk about being born again? And I think a lot of people don't really understand that concept. They think that religion is, oh, you have to be um, Catholic, you have to be a Jehovah's Witness, whatever it is, mm -hmm. they uh, think that having a relationship with God is about being a part of a religion mm -hmm. where scripture says, no, you must be born again in order to inherit the kingdom of God. So what is born again? Are you, uh, do you have any? Born again, I would say that, so I'll give you my, my outlook. Yeah. You know, growing up, mom and dad always would give me the the core principles of beliefs. Mm -hmm. More on my mom's side, those beliefs were going to church and things like that, mm -hmm. which for me, I never really, I never, I've been to church, mm -hmm. right? I have my belief. The Bible, and a lot of folks don't know this, the Bible sits on my um, nightstand since I've been 16 years old. That's beautiful. Psalms 23, mm -hmm. right? And it's always been like that. And it's it's kind of wild because I've done some travels within work mm -hmm. and I never brought the Bible with me. And I was I felt like there was an unsettling feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now some folks would say, is that because you don't have your spiritual alignment? I think it was just knowing that it wasn't there. It's like that mm -hmm. sense of peace yep. that comes over me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. But one thing I, I do want to say to that mm -hmm. is that that peace that you experience and that you feel you have with the Bible being close to you, mm -hmm. you can have that mm -hmm. by experiencing what it means to be born again. Mm -hmm. Because the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is the peace that God gives us, that peace that is from God lives inside of you when you are born again and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you are, it doesn't matter if you have your Bible with you or not, you can still have that peace because of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. Mm. So I would like to read the scripture so we that. can actually explain what it means yeah. to be born again. Um, so it's in John, the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 3. And this is where Jesus is sitting with a Pharisee. So a Pharisee was one of the Jews. And I don't know if you know, but the Jews were the ones that really persecuted mm -hmm, Jesus. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, But there was this one Pharisee, Nicodemus, who was curious because mm -hmm. he saw the miracles that Jesus was doing. So he wanted to talk to Jesus personally. So it's in John chapter 3. I'll begin at um, verse 2. And it says, This man, Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with, with him. So showing that he's been watching Jesus. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel at this that I tell you to be born again, that you must be born again. So Jesus here is implying that no, no, not only do we need to be born once, but we need a, a second birth, a spiritual birth. And why is that? It's because when we are born into this world, we are automatically separated from God because we're born into the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this world is a dark place, mm -hmm. right? So you're separated from God. And until you're born again, that's when you've been adopted. So I'll explain to you what born again is. It's, it's an act of God where he imparts eternal life into you, which is his Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when you've repented and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay. okay? So that is the second birth. And you actually want to know what's really interesting. I just learned um, in Genesis, let me see where it is exactly, but I learned this from Johnny Chang. I don't know if you've been listening to me. He's great. And he makes a, um, a, um, a comparison from when in creation God says to man, 
let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven. And why did you, uh, why did God use the the a fish and a bird? Is because each a fish and a bird need two births: caviar, an egg, and then they have a second birth where they swim yeah. out and then they fly out. So he's kind of making that comparison with us where we need those two births, mm-hmm. right? So when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of you, mm-hmm. right? And then so three things happen when you're born again. First thing that happens is your relationship with God. You're now made right in your relationship with mm-hmm. God. Prior to being born again, you are you are not for God. The Bible is very black and white. There's no gray area. Absolutely. The Bible talks about that there's a narrow path mm-hmm. and there's a broad path. Exactly. You're either following, you're either for God or you're not for God. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. So when you are born again, you've accepted Jesus into your heart mm-hmm. and now your relationship with God is mm-hmm. made right. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Second, sorry, I just want to go no, through. No, 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 yeah, no, okay. no, Second thing that happens is that your position changes, mm-hmm. meaning that you are in the kingdom of darkness mm-hmm. and that you have now been adopted into the kingdom of light. And this is found in Ephesians uh, chapter one. Um, so the spirit of adoption, meaning that when you are adopted into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of God, mm-hmm. that's when you are now called a child of God. Prior to that, you are just his creation. So that's a lot of things that people get um, confused about is that they think that we're all cho- children of God, mm-hmm. but essentially you are not his child until you have been born again into his family where mm-hmm. you can now call out to him as as your father, Perfect. right? Perfect. And then the third thing, oh, sorry, going back to that, through that Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you comes the process of sanctification. Mm -hmm. And sanctification means the process in which you become holy. So think about it. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. The the goal of that is to become holy as the Holy Spirit is holy. So through that, you are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you to now convict you of sin. If If you are not being convicted of sin, that means that you're not right in your relationship with God and you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, right? So it's not to condemn you, right? The scriptures tell us in Romans 8 that there is now, no, there is now therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the Holy Spirit isn't meant to condemn you, make you feel like you're a bad person. You deserve to go to hell. You're, you should be ashamed of yourself. He does it to, to correct us, to make us become more like Jesus so that we can live a holy and blameless life. When you when you know who you are in Jesus and when you have the Holy Spirit living in you, there's a sense of freedom. And I feel that a lot of people don't really understand what it means to be free mm. because of they, they've associated freedom with how much money they have. They've associated freedom with the things that they own. Mm-hmm. But my question to them is when you go to bed at night, what thoughts are running through your mind? Do you have freedom in your mind? Are you living a life of purpose? Yes. So basically going back to being born again, mm-hmm. that's how that's the only way you can fight temptation and sin is when you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Because aside from that, you're constantly in a battle because we're in our flesh. Absolutely. We're constantly battling that. So let me ask you this question, because I feel like my audience is going to probably think of this. You know, is being born again more from a perspective of getting like back in touch with God, getting baptized, things like that. Is that a form of that also too? So being born again and being baptized are two separate things. Okay. Yeah. So you are baptized because you were born again. There you go. So your baptism is a public declaration of your faith, mm-hmm. of what God has done in your life, mm-hmm. right? So Jesus was baptized at 30 years old, mm-hmm. right? So that should kind of just show you, you know, baptism is a choice that you make, but you are born again and then that leads you to baptism. There you go, okay. Perfect. Right. When I, this, this, this is like an information, like mm-hmm. a refresher is for me, yeah. you know, one thing that, that you're so powerful at doing is explaining things in such a digestive way. Well, that's good. When Thank did you. that start for you? Um, when did you, when did you go on this, on this purpose, this driven purpose of being and speaking the good, the good message? So I've been born again for exactly four years now, okay. October, 2020. Prior to that, I was raised Catholic. Um, I believed as as a little girl, but growing up, I kind of lost it. Mm -hmm. Um, I won't get into too many details, but basically what happened was 
I started studying uh, with Jehovah Witnesses back in 2020 when my, this is where kind of my journey began. And long story short, um, I was never a studious person at all. Like I never used to like reading. I never would open up a book. I just liked working with my hands and doing what I like to do, right? <laughs> okay, okay. So prior to, to my Christian life, it was completely opposite of what it is now. So through my studying with, with Jehovah Witnesses, um, you know, they're, they are very studious people where they, you know, they study a lot. They study their um, watchtower, which is like a part of their organization. Mm-hmm. They study the Bible. So the reason why I, I guess I become the way that I am, really study and understand, okay, what is the truth? Because not all things can be true, especially especially the truth of God is objective. It's not subjective, right? So I became very hungry to know who God was. And it got to a point where I was like, God, I don't even know who you are. All I know is that I love you and I want to do the right thing. So then through that, I started studying scripture, studying history, studying studying the Bible, studying the Hebrew text, the Greek text. And then through that, that's how we became born again. But the main th- reason why I've become, like, uh, I guess, good at explaining things is because I know what it means to be deceived. I know what it means to be taught things in such a way that can deceive you, whether or not the person knows that they're doing it. The devil's very clever. He's Absolutely. very he's very crafty. That's what Absolutely. scripture says. Absolutely. So for myself, I'm also a very simple person mm-hmm. in the sense where I need things to be broken down to me in a way where mm-hmm. I can understand it clearly. And I believe God will use that for people who I guess are like are are similar to me. Mm-hmm. Right. So just through that of explaining it because I know what what it's also like to hear someone say something be like hey what does that mean Mm -hmm. right so if if I have the chance to help somebody understand what it means to be born again what it means to have the Holy Spirit live in you what sanctification means right then I'll then I I I enjoy doing that absolutely You, you speak to that point where you know the devil and he's clever and I it goes to a I had a guest come on back pandemic season and my my townhouse flooded and your town was flooded it flooded it lost a lot of equipment oh no and the he, if he actually dm me the other day um his name is money money mm-hmm. lands and he said something where he's like anytime you make a declaration within self is that's mm-hmm. when the devil's alarm clock oh awakens. yeah and it's so wild because you'll say certain things and then you'll just see how it's the universe or the laws of attraction whatever it is And these little things start coming into your life that are just, they look like negatives, Mm. but they're not necessarily negatives if you build out the positive aspect of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that if you make a declaration to yourself, that's when bad things happen? That's when bad, he's like, that's the devil's alarm clock and that's when he awakes and that's when he's going to put all these obstacles in front of you. Because the devil is all about the kingdom of self Mm. and that's what this world has become. It's all about me. What do I want? I want to live for myself. Nobody can tell me what to do. When you think about the attitude that people have towards God, it's very, it's a childish behavior Mm -hmm. because you're like, I don't want to listen to you. I want to do what I want to do. Right? So, uh, the world says, find yourself. Jesus mm-hmm. says, deny yourself, pick up your mm-hmm. cross and follow me. Mm-hmm. So anything that points to yourself, it almost is, is it's the opposite of what the kingdom of God preaches, mm-hmm. right? The kingdom of God is about looking upward, looking to him, because he's the one that tells you who you are. If you are constantly following yourself and what you want your whole life, I mean, I can speak from experience of myself because I wasn't raised Christian. I had no idea. And the more I followed my heart, the more it led me to difficult trials and, and just heartbreak and feeling more and more lost, right? The moment I gave my, my, my life to Christ is the moment he told me, this is who you are mm-hmm. and this is why I created you. Mm-hmm. This is the purpose that I have for you. Just listen to me and follow me. And you see that with your content. You see that with the other shows that you've been on. And mm-hmm. that's what resonates because you, you, you don't do it from a, how do I say it? I feel like when you look at some of the people in social media land, the ones that are the pastors and they're preaching, you can see that there's a money symbol behind it. But you do it from a perspective where it's palatable Mm -hmm. and it's easier to digest. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I see like I've snuck in some of your your Instagram lives and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and you see it. And I feel like 
my question to you is when you picked that book up, was it like you went through, through so I'm going to speak how the audience are going to look at it from chapter to chapter mm -hmm. or was it that you just decided I'm going from front to back? Mm -hmm. What is it you did? So as a, um, when I was a Jehovah witness, they teach you to read it from front to back. Mm -hmm. um, but as a Christian, we live in the new covenant with, with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, the way that I always suggest to read it is I suggest to read Genesis first. So you understand creation, you understand Abraham, Noah's Ark, the story mm -hmm. of Joseph, because mm -hmm. a lot of that is referred to in the New Testament. And then after that, you go straight to the New Testament, you go to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you read through to the end, mm -hmm. right? Because when you know the New Testament and you know what Jesus did for us, it sheds light on the Old Testament. Now, what I do is... Because I've read almost through the whole Bible, there's mm -hmm. a few chapters that I that there's a few books I haven't read through, mm -hmm. so um, I just basically go to whatever the Lord is calling me to. Core principles of Christianity, Christianity. Speak to two of the most important. Core principles. Um, well, you see, you light up. You smile. See, yeah. she lights up. She smiles when she hears that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um. The core principles, so the most important things to remember as being a Christian mm -hmm. is that, is, okay, um, surrendering, your, like surrendering yourself to the Lord every single day, dying mm -hmm. to yourself mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Knowing that you are nothing, not in the sense where you're, you're speaking down to yourself, but knowing who God is compared to who you are. Right. Surrendering yourself to God every day. The worst thing to do is to think of yourself more highly than when God thinks of you. Mm -hmm. God can't use somebody that's full of pride mm -hmm. and thinks that they know everything. The moment you think you know everything, you know absolutely nothing. Exactly. That's what becomes your biggest downfall. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, surrendering yourself and then obviously sharing the love of Christ to others. Right. Remembering that this isn't a, just about you and your journey. We are called to spread the gospel, to share the love in Christ of Jesus, uh, to share the love of Jesus Christ, especially in this day and age where people don't really believe that there is a God or that there is love. As as long every interaction that you can have with someone, if you can even just share a little bit of that love to them, maybe it can just like plant some seeds of hope. Right. So speak to it in relationship when God enters a, a relationship, because I feel like you, you speak to a lot of like, I'll say it, there's a lot of degeneracy oh. out there in the mm -hmm. world, right? A lot of temptation. and people, Like romantic relationships? Rom it's romantic, okay. right? Romantic. And you see a lot of, how do I say this? You see a lot of just degenerate views as mm -hmm. far as how, there's people, are, I feel like this nobody is pure anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's that sense of just, like you mentioned, go out there, do it yourself, do it yourself, mm -hmm. do it yourself. I don't care about the repercussions. I can go out there. I can go cheat if I want to. And then yeah. what's going to happen? If they find out, they find out. It's like I just changed my socks mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. When, because you, you're, you're a God-fearing woman, right? Mm -hmm. You're in a relationship. My question to you is, is speak to where men and women can hear what you've gone through. Mm-hmm. And how they can apply the foundations of welcoming. It's just a different opinion. Yeah. I think that's what we yeah, need to, to have more in conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So for myself, I was somebody who always, I longed to be loved and to mm. love. Mm. And because of that, especially prior to being a Christian, I always end up finding myself in relationships where I was trying to save that person without actually understanding that. And I think that's something that a lot of, women can relate to is that you enter a relationship thinking you can save them when really in turn you're trying to save yourself Facts. but I've allowed myself to be mistreated I've allowed myself to be spoken down to um have felt very insecure in relationships hated the way I looked um been controlled all of that stuff and <sighs> I knew I was gonna get emotional it's all good and it wasn't until I entered into a relationship with God where I realized what it truly means to be loved because we think we know what love is and we just base our perception of love based on the relationships that we've had on earth but in reality we're all broken and because of that we've all hurt one another 
we've all caused each other to have wounds when we probably didn't even mean it. We've been um, a byproduct of other people's sin, you know, being born into maybe families where mm-hmm. you didn't ask to be born into this. And now you're suffering the repercussions of it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it wasn't until I entered into relationship with God where I realized what love was. And the Bible says that there is no fear in love. Mm-hmm. Perfect love casts out fear. Mm. And in order to know that perfect love, you need to know the love of God because God is the only one that never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are all constantly changing. We cannot find our peace in anything of this world because you don't know what tomorrow brings. Mm. So if you place your peace in something that can change, then that means your peace will easily go. So for myself... You know, I still remained in a relationship that I knew the Lord didn't want me to be in even after I became born again. And a lot of it was, I guess, pride, right? Because I, you know, I wanted to test God a little bit. I wanted to, um, you know, just try and do things myself. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it just caused more hurt. Mm -hmm. But knowing the love of Christ and knowing how much he actually loves you it makes it easier for you to walk away from things that aren't aligning with your beliefs. And real, true love is not supposed to hurt you. It's supposed to heal you. It's supposed to to heal the broken parts of you. It's not supposed to make you feel worse about yourself or question anything um, because the love of God is healing. And what, so the Bible says that a man should love his wife the way that Uh, Jesus loves the church. Mm. And what Mm. did Jesus do for the church? He died for the church. Facts. Right? It also says that a woman should submit to her her husband, but not in the sense, and the world looks at the word submit as um, like, oh, you need to be silent. You can't say anything. But in the Greek, there was no such word as submit. So what it actually means is to listen, to to respect, right? And that's, that's the proper dynamic of how a relationship should be. When you start thinking that no i like you when when you start to try and play a role that was never yours to to play that's when it starts to clash when you understand okay this is my role as a wife or a girlfriend and this is his role as a man it allows you guys to grow closer in relationship as well as having god in the center of it too right but the two questions i ask is to the man are you worth submitting to and to the woman are you worth dying for holy boy oh boy so, Woo-hoo. yeah, but can you say yeah. that again? So, to the man, are you worth submitting to, and to the woman, are you worth dying for? Huh. And, um, I just want to speak on that quickly because I was in a relationship Please as do. well as you know, a woman sometimes women find themselves in relationships where they have these faiths and they have these beliefs, and they almost feel like they're obligated to do it to a man that doesn't deserve it. And that's what I've tried explaining to some like woman that I know is like, but he doesn't deserve to be submitted to. So this is not a relationship that you should be walking in. Right. So things like that, look at the man, don't just think, okay, this is what the Bible says. So I have to live by this. Is he actually worth submitting to? And if not, then that means he's not from God. So the women that just hear that, because I know there's going to be some, Mm -hmm. they're going to get frustrated and they're going to be punching the air. (laughs) <laughs> just with frustration, what is what is the number one quality they should be looking at from a man? Because I feel like what they look for in a man is not really the qualities that they should be looking mm-hmm. for. And it's like, how did your dad, how did your grandfather, how did your brother, all of those predominant roles in your life, how are they? How did they grow up, and what did they enlist in the inside of themselves? Mm-hmm. What is that? What is should they should be looking for? The number um. one thing. Well, as a Christian, as a Christian woman, we should be looking for a man who has Christ in him. Okay. There right? You go. Yep. Yep. So a man who has given his life to God, mm-hmm. who knows what it means to surrender and to submit to God, mm-hmm. because you want to, you want the both of you to submit to God. Because if you're submitting to the man, he's submitting to God. You both are now submitting to God. For myself, as a Christian, when you are in a relationship, and I speak from experience with a non-Christian, you can't share your heart with him. That's the truth. And if I, you know, you can't share your heart with that person. 
And that's the biggest thing that you need in a relationship is to be able to share your heart with your person, Mm -hmm. right? Another thing too, what they should look for is do they respect you? Do they honor you? Do they care about your emotions and feelings? And in my new relationship, which I'm so thankful to God for, is that he has shown, like my, my boyfriend has shown me that a man should care about you, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Care about how you feel. How do things make you feel? I've never had that before. Mm. And Man, so for me, so for me, this love that I've received is a love that God has already shown me through my relationship with God, but now he's showing it to me through a person. And that's the thing, because you know what's coming up for me? It's the same thing, like, even with certain women that come in your life. Mm -hmm. And they listen to how you are, how you talk, you know. I have my faith. I pray every night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, I remember one particular, (laughs) one particular girl I dated saw the Bible on the the table. And the Mm -hmm. first thing she goes, what is that? And I said, Mm -hmm. "It's, it's the Bible. She goes, why do you have it open? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't on a thing of curiosity. It was like an attack. It was like an reje- it was like a rejection. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I was like, you didn't have the alignment the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. And you can normally find out when you and just from a man's perspective, mm-hmm. when you're out here in the dating world, you can know when somebody's spiritually aligned to some degree. Mm-hmm. And they have that ability to submit, right? Because Submissions, like you spoke, is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's the the Western world has flipped it on its yes, axis. 100%. And said it's, you know, yeah, if a woman submits, then, you know, she's weak or whatever you want to call it, whatever mm-hmm. fancy words that they come up yeah. with. And I think that what I do here with this podcast is I speak true and I speak real because it's like we have to have these engaging conversations. Mm-hmm. For me, this is part refresher learning but the opportunity to hear a different perspective yeah right because we can go like i mentioned you go listen to i'm just trying to think who which which person like somebody like td jakes mm-hmm. i'm just gonna throw his name out there mm-hmm. it's 70 percent woo all about money yeah and he's not even spiritually aligned because he's actually a disgusting human being yeah and yes i did it's say that yeah you no, know what i mean I and you see that happen where it's like is it about preaching the good or is it about collecting the dollar? Exactly. And that's why the Bible says to watch out for false, false prophets. False prophets, yeah. Because there's a lot of people who have come into the world to preach, to just use the name of Jesus, but you have to look at the fruits of their life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to know the word of God. Mm-hmm. So that when you are listening to someone, even myself, don't listen to everything I say. Go and check it with the word of God. The word of God is is true. The word of God does not change. So, um I know a lot of a lot of false prophets, a lot of preachers who started off good, but ended off badly, mm-hmm. right? Because they either allowed money or temptation to get the best of them, and that's why the, the the Bible says the Bible doesn't say the love of money. No, the Bible doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Exactly. So when you love money, it results as in something evil, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, Another thing I wanted to say, because you were talking about being a man in the dating world, is that I can, and I understand how hard it is, because I see women now acting in such a way that I've never seen before. And it's almost like women have fought so hard to be respected and to be valued, all for them, and not every woman, but a lot of them, to just kind of just get rid of that completely. And that's why for myself, being a woman who once found her identity in men, there's a God who loves you so much and wants to heal every broken part of you and wants to do life for you. God wants to bring the right person into your life. He wants you to go into the career that he's called you to. He's your creator. If you want to know how to use um, an invention, you go to the creator for it. Yes. You don't go to yourself no, and think, I'm going to figure out how to use it because you're all, you're going to end up doing something wrong. Right? right? So... I do what I do because I, I have a love for a woman. This isn't to judge women or to condemn them. It's like I have a love and my heart hurts because I was there. I, I was that woman. So I speak from, you know, a place of understanding and experience. Well, that's because society, and I don't care, we're here now, so I'll say it. I think society wants to eradicate 
the men and women in the household and something I mm-hmm. spoke about earlier before doing this podcast, but I didn't really want to touch on it too, too mm-hmm. much, but it's, it's the truth. It's like, there's, you're creating a separation where you see women are out here being more sexually liberated mm-hmm. and men are kind of on the back end, mm-hmm. right? Because they, they say, again, women are the gatekeepers to sex, men are the gatekeepers to what? To, to relationship. That's just the reality of life. And I know some mm-hmm. people are like, well, you don't know what you're talking about, but it's the truth, mm-hmm. right? And I think now there's some women out here that want to be more about showing the up, showing their body online, mm-hmm. but not doing it from a purpose. Like, what's the purpose you're doing that? Attention. You know what I mean? It's all for attention. The fitness game, I'll say it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was a personal trainer. You see the, the workout tops of the bras and this and that, and they say, well, if I have the figure, I can wear it. But it's like, at some point in time, you know what you're doing it for. Yeah. You're in a, you're in a, you're in an all men's gym. Like there's a bunch of guys and one girl and she's in, like, you want the attention. Like, yeah. You see all the set of eyes that's looking mm-hmm. at you. And it's just like, yes, wear that, feel special within it. Um, that's not what I'm saying. But at some times you have to, you have to have a little bit of decorum on that. Yeah. This over sexualization that's happening yes. in the world and is I not a great like, thing. And I find like right now it's like men also it's like not only men anymore, it's like men want to find a good woman, but it's like to find a good woman is so hard. And then it's like the man hurts the woman and the woman hurts the next man she dates. And it's just like a constant cycle of everyone just hurting each other. And it's like, that's why I think it's become so much harder as well as the influence of social media. There's so much access to, you can literally cheat on someone within 10 minutes. You message them, meet up with them, cheat on them. There's so much access. That's why our parents' generation you know, like <laughs> they didn't have anything. They had to walk to one another, drive to one another, another right? right? Or they more... pick up the phone. They pick up the landline phone yes. and have the conversation. Yes. You know what I mean? Now it's like we can do FaceTime or we can just, yeah. you know, send voice yeah. notes and things like that. Let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think we're heading in a, do you think it's ever going to get better? Um, There's no right or wrong. Yeah, I'm going to try to answer this in the right way. I don't think it's going to get, there's going to come a time where there will be peace, but it's, I I don't know when that time will be, Mm -hmm. but it's uh, essentially, it's not going to really get better. Mm -hmm. I do think though, that with the way that the world is going, people are starting to question a little bit more and want to know if God's actually real. Cause I think people are getting to the end of the end of themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mind, I want to read you a scripture. Do that. Yeah. Um, that kind of points to everything that's going on. It might give you a little bit of a perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's in Ephesians, which is in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It's chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. So So it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, so the physical, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Meaning that we aren't fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against the physical, natural things that we can see. We're fighting against spiritual things. Whatever is happening in the spiritual comes to light in the physical. So going back to your question, are things going to get better? I don't necessarily believe that. I think that people, I think, but what God, what the devil means for evil, God will turn it for good. Mm -hmm. So I think in that God will use, will start drawing more people to him. But I think that essentially this is a good understanding of why the world is in the state that it's in. It's because we're fighting against a spiritual battle, spiritual warfare. And in order to fight that, you can only fight it through prayer. Prayer is the vehicle to fight the spiritual things. Does that make sense? There is. And it, I'll add like, to I'll add yeah. to real quick where it's you say spiritual, but I even think it's even to even go beyond that now. It's it's just so much division, just even with any area that you look at. Because that's what the devil wants. The devil doesn't like unity. That's why he targets family. That's why he targets uh genders, race, everything. Is that there's a spirit of division upon the world right now. That's a, it's a, it's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit, right? So hmm. in order to. Expand on that a little bit there. So, I like where, I like where we're going. I like, yeah. walk, let me walk with you on this. So there's a spirit of division 
there's spirit of pride, spirit of envy in all those demonic spirits. And right now, the one thing the devil hates is unity, right? Why do you think he attacked Adam and Eve instantly? There's so much division in the world right now because the, because the world is in, is in the hands of the wicked one. He has control right now, but God is sovereign over all, right? So in order to fight the spiritual things, in order to fight what, what we can see, we need to get into prayer. Um, it's like yourself, right? You have trauma, you have wounds in within your soul that have happened to you maybe as a child and have kind of come along. And in order, there's nothing that you could do on the outside mm -hmm. that will heal what's on the inside, right? Only God can do that. So it's the same thing with, with um, the things of this world right now. In order to um, change what we can see, we need to get into prayer. And that's why prayer is extremely important in your walk with Jesus as being a Christian. Um, we fight our battles with prayer. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And there's so many folks that's, you know, they, they don't have that belief, but if they stub their toe, they're like, oh God. <laughs> right you see that happen. So, i don't No, you see that happen or or you know and like sometimes i'll say like if i'm around my folks i'll say like jesus christ my mom's like don't use his name in vain i'm like okay yeah mom i got it yeah yep yep yep, yep. yep. And that's why sometimes i just find like another filler you it's, know what you I mean? know what it's true and that's another thing too and i've noticed that in the last week i've heard a couple people blame god for something mm -hmm. and i'm just thinking but you choose not to believe in him you choose just to ignore him but when something bad goes wrong he's the first person you blame mm -hmm. right and it's like why do we do that? And I've done that before, before, like prior to my Christian life. But once, you know, I understand like the truth, I, I know that God, God doesn't cause certain things to happen. We live in a broken world. We, li we live in a world of sin and the effects of that, unfortunately, are things that will happen. But in Revelations 24, it says that we will, we will live in a world where there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more outcries, no more suffering. Mm -hmm. Right. But as of right now, we live in this, in, in this world, but um yeah i do i do notice a lot of people want to blame god for everything mm -hmm. without even having a belief in him and one thing i do want to talk about um about believing in god is i'm sure you know the scripture john 3 16 mm -hmm. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that will that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life absolutely and this is the thing that i always challenge with people uh challenge people with is that a lot of people will say yes i believe in god but that's it. I believe he exists, but that's it. The Greek word in, um, in, yeah, the Greek word for believe in that scripture is pistevo, which means to believe with all your heart, with all your soul, to completely trust and to have faith in him, right? Because the demons believed in Jesus too. They believe in Jesus. They actually know scripture more than we do. They know, they believe in Jesus more than we do. That's why Jesus is always constantly a target, Right. So that word believe in English, things are, you know, we lose the meaning of things, the word love, the word believe. Right. And so but just to understand that context, this is what it means to believe in Jesus, to believe in him with your whole heart, mm -hmm. not just not just to believe he exists. I heard a content creator, I think it was a YouTuber. I can't remember who it was for sure, but he said that when you're out here spreading a good message mm -hmm. and you have strong thoughts and beliefs that the universe will then send you people to derail you off that mm -hmm. the it's okay so a couple things i want to say so for myself i don't yes i'm spreading the good news but i'm also speaking truth which is facts because the truth isn't always good to some people. Oh yeah, for because sure. the truth offends people. Of course, people don't want to be told that the way that they're living isn't the way that they should be living, <laughs> and therefore they're offended. Exactly. That's why it takes a lot of time sometimes for certain people to just let go mm -hmm. and let God. Mm -hmm. Right. The second thing is, you know, I'm gonna bring up the term universe. Bring it okay? up. Bring it so, up. So. Um, so he was saying that the universe, so when you're spreading a good message, the universe will then come and bring you bad things, yeah. right? So in the Christian perspective, it's it's the devil, mm -hmm. right? So um, the term universe, this is something that I've learned, right? Uh, because prior to being Christian, I used to use that term as well. And you need to understand that the universe is a creation. It doesn't have a will. It doesn't have the power to to make things happen in fact the universe and creation worships god 
So um, to kind of, I don't want to say correct, but that term universe, it's, it's, it's the devil. There's two, there's God and there's evil. There's good and there's evil. There's God and there's, there's the devil. Mm -hmm. Right. I will, I will read you a scripture. So I'm just going to. No, no. Before you even read yeah. that scripture, one of the things I want, I want the audience to really understand here is, mm -hmm. is that you're so precise with everything you pick up with the book. It's mm -hmm. like you already know what it is you're going to, right? Mm -hmm. That's it's very it's a very textbook yeah. and it's very surgical. Well, like one that. thing I I will say that I've um I have a love for it's Christian apologetics, and what Christian apologetics is, it's being able to give a a, a reason for what you believe in. So, the Greek word apologia means to give a defense for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. So for myself, because I have been deceived, because I, I do know what it means to be de like deceived, and I've also studied other religions, um, I really want to understand why I believe in what I believe in. I don't just listen to somebody and then believe what they say. Mm -hmm. I'm the person that I'm like, why, why? I want to know why, even with God, right? Even with certain scriptures, I'm like, hey, I need to know why this says this, right? So it's good to be like that, Um to be able to give a scripture for certain things. So one of the areas was like um, the universe and um, with atheists and people who, I guess, new age, the new age religion use that term. Mm -hmm. But I will, sh I will read to you one scripture um, regarding this whole creation thing. Okay. So it's in Romans chapter one and it's, I'll read from 19 and then I'll just read a couple. Okay. It says, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, meaning that God has revealed himself through his creation. So they are without excuse. For they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their few." Foolish hearts were darkened. Then it says, um, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. So this basically explains how God is the creator of all creation, including the universe, right? But what people have done, they've taken that creation and made it into a God. They've made it into an idol, right? So that's why I always challenge people because, like, I'll have conversations with people about, you know, my relationship or what I'm doing. They're like, oh, yeah, the universe heard your prayers. I'm like, no, God did, as, as plain as it is. But you have to speak truth. You have to let people know, like, listen, like, the universe is a creation. The universe actually worships God, right? Speak to that word manifest because we had a hmm. conversation on the phone about that. You see, you yeah. light up again, you smile. <laughs> like manifestation, because I feel like so many folks bring this. Oh, I manifested that. I manifested that, and I think mm. that your belief up here and what you speak out comes to you. Yes, as long as you believe it, it's going to come to you. Yeah. So the idea of manifestation, in the way that the world perceives it, is the idea that you are in control of what happens to you and that you are God, you are God. Because even though you may not say I'm God or I'm a God, the idea that you think you control, can control your whole destiny is the belief that you have that power that God has, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I do believe that we can control the things that we can control, like our behavior, our reactions, our actions to one another. But when it comes to our actual like destiny, um, I don't believe that we have control over that. However, I do believe that there is power in the tongue. The Bible speaks about that, that there is power in the tongue. That's why we need to be wise with what we speak and what we say. Um, so, you know, you speak negatively, you know, people, ne negative things are going to control you, like your feelings and stuff. But when you speak positively, it's, you know, your mindset changes. But with the idea of manifesting this boyfriend or this girlfriend or this job, you know, you can think you're doing it, but really at the end of the day, has that actually fulfilled you? Has that actually brought you true peace? Um, I did a podcast with a guy prior to this and he was speaking about that because he was very much into that. And a couple of the girlfriends he had, he said he manifested them. Like he wanted this specific girl, blonde hair, blue eyes, this tall, <laughs> blah, 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 all of that. And they all ended very badly, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's almost like God will let you do 
what you want for a bit like even with myself i i i you know like i said before i tested god a bit mm-hmm. right which was very wrong for me to do but that led to my biggest downfall i think right? peop- i think i think folks that go out there and say i want this guy or this girl or whatever it's it's like calling on <laughs> it's like calling things out there that you may not necessarily want mm-hmm. because you don't know what that's coming with is that something that's going to be really pure is that going to be someone that's going to bring destruction mm-hmm. in your life yeah so from a man's perspective it's like guys that are out there like yo i want this girl to be this 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 you can bring that she or she can come into your life and she brings that but is she is she providing sorry tongue twister it's okay is she providing chaos or is she bringing peace in your life mm-hmm. because i'm pretty sure you have peace in your life mm-hmm. if i'm going to be calling on a woman to come in my life she has to bring peace not chaos mm-hmm. we know there's going to be things you know yeah, of course bad days you're always gonna have like that, right? yeah. you know somebody um, cuts you off in traffic you know, mm-hmm. whatever but it's like you don't want that chaos. You don't want that um, unsettling ability of yourself where you're still going through past situations yeah. from past relationships mm-hmm. or past issues with friends. Like you got to clear all that stuff up. Yeah. Empty glass, you know, mm-hmm. clean slate. Yeah. yeah. One thing to also remember is that there's good and then there's God. So you can have good, but what God can bring you will be so much more than what you could have ever done for yourself because God is sovereign. He sees all things, right? So what you think is good right now, you don't see the future. You don't see what's going to happen, right? So it may lead you to a path that, you know, it might not be so good anymore. So that's why it's very, you know, important to surrender these areas of your life to God because he's the one that will see all things even. And sometimes God will lead you into a place where you're like, I don't know why I'm here right now, but I just need to trust you, right? Always does that. It's funny. You're speaking to me now because it's like there's trials and there's tribulations that mm-hmm. happen, right? A lot of stuff I keep off record, but I'll I'll shed light to this. Mm-hmm. It's like when you're going through specific things, he will show you the way, but he'll test you mm-hmm. to see how are you going to react to this? Mm-hmm. How are you going to react to this? Because if you react in a negative way, then you're always going to be getting the repeat cycle. Yeah. And you know why he tests you? Tell me. To reveal what's in your heart. Exactly. So through your testing, through your trials, it reveals what's in your heart. And if you, if that area of your life has not been dealt with, then you're going to keep going through the same trials mm-hmm. until until you've learned. It's funny you say that because he, he just he, he tested me, and I, mm-hmm. I feel like I pass it with flying colors. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like a pass because I'm like it's like this cool. It's just the stuff behind the scenes yeah, stuff. It's nothing it's okay. crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. None that's gonna, like you lose sleep over, but it's like yeah. you know, life is life is a very very interesting thing, especially when you when you have them in your presence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you just I've always said this. It's like I know some folks don't want to like do the whole church thing, but just just pick up that book mm-hmm. and just start reading. Yeah, um, regarding church. Um, I always had that mindset too, where, you know, you don't need to go to church to, be, to believe in God, which mm-hmm. is true. Mm-hmm. You don't need to go to a church to believe in God. Mm-hmm. That's your own personal relationship mm-hmm. with him. However, church, let me just make one thing clear. Church actually just means the gathering of God's people. Facts. It's not just a building. Mm-hmm. So you can be, we can be all here, all believing in God and have our own worship, have our own time with God. That's just what church is. The body of Christ is, is his church, Right. But the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, meaning that don't forsake being around people who are like minded than you. It's you can't get physically strong if you don't go to a gym. So you can't get spiritually strong if you're not surrounding yourself with people who are on the same page as you. So that's why church is really important. It doesn't save you. Right. I don't go to church to be saved. I'm um I go to church because I'm saved. So there's a difference there. Um, But my biggest growth in my spiritual walk was when I actually started going to church consistently because in the four years I was very inconsistent in certain times. But when I actually stuck to it, that's when I really grew a lot because you have to, 
you have to be planted. That's where you, you go and you get your spiritual food. However, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? And that's where the maintaining has to come. Mm-hmm. That's where you still, you have to have that Monday morning faith, a Tuesday morning faith, right? Pick up your Bible and read. That's the most important is your prayer life and reading the word of God. That's where you're going to have the biggest transformation in your life. Nice. But church is important. Um, I don't want to say you don't need to go to church because I mean, you have to, you do have to find a church that is important to you, but anybody that preaches that you need to go to this church in order to, you know, be saved or you need to make a promise to this church. Cause there are some churches that preach that those are the churches you leave automatically. <laughs> you leave automatically. Right. But you know, they say that some of the biggest sinners go to church though. Of course, of course. Um, but that's an individual, like that's a personal issue, right? You don't go somewhere based on what you think other people are doing. I go to church because I want to hear from God, not because of this person's a sinner, this person's a sinner. When you start focusing, that's why it's so important to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, because when you start to look to the left or the right, you're going to fall, right? When you're too focused on what everyone else is doing, you're going to fall. You need to keep your eyes fixed on him. So it's a, it's a personal relationship, right? So it's a, it's literally a personal, it's you and God repentance. Maybe we can speak on that. Let's talk about it. So that's a big thing that basically that's how you enter into your relationship with God is by repenting. And there's actually two types of repentance. Um, in the new Testament, there's one repentance and in, in the Greek it's metanoia. And what it means is um, a change of direction at a deep heart level, okay? Then there's a second repentance. I'm not going to say this properly, but it's metamolomai, which means to have sorrow for something, but not to have fully changed at that um, heart level um, agreement that Mm -hmm. you have. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament, the first repentance is mentioned 60 times, and the second repentance is mentioned um, six times. So I just want to share that with you is, is that the fact that there's two different types of repentances, there's the repentance that will, you know, you completely change direction and there's repentance where you just feel deep sorrow for something, but you haven't really changed at the heart level. From an, uh, oops, from a biblical standpoint, yes. and that book and mm-hmm. what that book possesses, how many, how many hours would you say you've put into that? Oh gosh. Um, I, I honestly, I can't, I wouldn't be able to tell you, Mm -hmm. but it's the only book that I read. Well, I read other Christian books, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, over four years, I don't know. It's, you know, there's been times I'm not going to try and sit here all righteous and holy. Like there's been times where I've fallen away and I had, and I didn't pick up my Bible as much as I should have. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's always something that I go back to because it's the only thing that's going to bring you, that's going to, you know, teach you what wisdom is, teach you about, you know, life and, mm-hmm. you know, certain trials. And God does speak to you through his word. The reason why I ask that question, because I'm like, I'm thinking of ones that may attempt to pick that up and mm-hmm. they may get scared because they may not understand. And that's completely OK. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand the Bible when I first started reading it. Mm-hmm. I do encourage people, if you do want to get a Bible, you get a study Bible so meaning that, um, so this is a Bible where I have like columns on the side because I like to write notes, but you can get a Bible that has notes already in there. So if you're reading something, you're like, hey, what does that mean? You can go and refer to it as well as there's um, a couple different sites that you can visit, gotquestions.org or bibleref.com where you can type in the scripture, you can go and it can give an explanation of it. Um, but don't allow your fear of not understanding to stop you from picking up the Bible and reading it because it can be in that moment where God speaks to you and you don't have to understand it through your own human understanding because it could just be that spirit of God that does the understanding for you and that's where it'll speak to your heart. There's been been many situations where people who didn't even know God opened up the Bible, read a scripture and just God ordained the spirit of God spoke like directly to them. Another thing, too, I want to speak about the Bible is that um, the Bible, a lot of people think it's, you know, man-made and how can you trust it and all this stuff. But you have to remember the Bible, it's not one book, it's 66 books composed into one book that was written over a 1600-year period, written by over 40 different authors in three different languages over three continents. 
So in order for this book to have been put together so perfectly and in unison should say something, as well as the fact that people from 2,000, over 2,000 years ago have been trying to destroy this and cannot destroy it should tell you something too about the Bible. And when you say destroying, are you saying destroying and like to like burn their, it? Their, yeah. Okay. Like or to are burn they it. Trying to, to like it. just yeah. bring up different narratives yeah. and different things, mm -hmm. different thought processes. Yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah. So let me ask a question as we're, we're winding this down mm -hmm. when you're not. And I think because folks know you as the Bible girl. Yeah. All right. Who's Alicia outside of that? Outside mm -hmm. of the Bible, outside of the all of that. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, so Alicia, outside of the Bible, I'm a family girl. I've always been very, very close to my family. Mm -hmm. um, my family is very important to me, like my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. Mm -hmm. um, I am an older sister and also a younger sister to my brother. So I'm the middle child. Okay, middle child. Okay. Um, I have always had a passion for helping people. I've always had a love for helping, you know, my friends. Even prior to becoming a Christian, I always wanted, um, I've always had friends in my life who always came to me as a person to like, for me to listen and for me to talk to them, right? So I always had that love for people and wanting to see them do good. Um, I also, I love like the beauty industry okay. too. Okay, okay. Um, I have my own business doing things, okay. but essentially since I've become Christian, I've become, I guess you can say like a Jesus freak. <laughs> um, my whole life since I've become Christian has revolved around this. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't, um, watch anything that's not Christian, not in the sense where I'm like brainwashed, mm -hmm. but for me, I like to watch things or read things that are going to fill me and are going to teach me, um, um, in terms of, you know, uh, music, I try not to listen to secular music very much because, I mean, the words in there that you listen to and you don't even realize mm -hmm. that, you know, are essentially becoming a part mm -hmm. of your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So I listen to Christian music a lot. Um, and I just, I love being around people that um, I love. I love being around my friends, my family. Um, obviously, I love being around my boyfriend now. He's been a blessing to me. I also love to work out. I like the gym, okay. but okay. Um, you got to stay strong mentally, physically, and spiritually. That's well, I what I always that. say. I can tell that. So does that go with like with food also too? I love food. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I will say is that, you know, um, the scripture, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, doesn't just mean to not, you know, have sex. It means to also respect your body, not to indulge in like sugar and you know, carbs and fast food and all of that, you need to really protect and honor your body mm -hmm. as a living sacrifice to mm -hmm. God. So that's something that, you know, I'm becoming more mindful of, but I do love, I am a foodie. Yeah. Like I, I do love- A little burger I, here I, and there, I right? do a little burger, a, a little big big burger. burger. She's a big <laughs> burger? <laughs> how many, how many patties are you thinking? That's my question. Smash burgers are the best. <laughs> Smash burgers, okay. So what you put on it? I like cheese and pickles, cheese? cheese and pickles and ketchup and all of it. Yeah? Yeah, I eat everything. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not picky. And yes. the reason why I asked that is because I know that you came into this podcast and mm -hmm. you you said you were fast. You're fasting. I'm fasting, yeah. You're fasting. How long have, how long have you been fasting then? I haven't ate um since like yesterday at nine o'clock, yeah. maybe. And that's just to come in. Yeah, to so your usually mind. as um, you know, as Christians or even like I know some pastors that mm -hmm. will before that they go and speak, they fast. And the idea of fasting is just to leave more room for God to like work through you and speak through you. I love that. I love yeah. That. I love that. You I'm I'm gonna before before I we close this, I, I wanna say something to you because I truly believe that you possess such a skill that a podcast, and I've said this to you on the phone, now it's out here, mm -hmm. and now it's like the universe, <laughs> that it's about time we see you on that, on that stage. And I truly believe that you could do a whole lot Thank because from a, from a creator first, that's why I always think that if, if you really apply that foundation, you just say, small foundation you know episode here or there mm -hmm. or like every other week because i feel like with what you're getting into is you got to digest it 
Mm-hmm. There's a lot to digest. I truly believe you have the ability to do whatever you want to do in that space. Thank you. And just add it as a tool, as a mm-hmm. vessel to just lead. Lead the ones that are not really understanding of what the good book can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, for me here, this, today's episode is is a refresher for me, but it mm-hmm. also gives me a different perspective mm-hmm. just to listen to you because it's yeah. not all about the, you know, like I said, you're, you're, you're preaching or you're talking. It's about money. There's nothing attached to it. It's no. knowledge. It's applied mm-hmm. knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I give you just nothing but thanks and praise for that. Thank you. Thank you. Also with, with you, I really appreciate you even, you know, allowing me to be on your podcast. Of course, come on now. And um, I I admire how your podcast, it's funny, people have been asking me what kind of podcast does he have? And I said, you know, he has one that, you know, people come on and, you know, they just aren't, um, I don't know what, what the right word is, but you actually want your podcast to produce good fruit, mm-hmm. right? You want it, you want people to listen to it and mm-hmm. to leave being more knowledgeable in a certain area. And I really admire that to you because in this world that we live in, it's so easy to just follow the crowd and to do what everyone else is doing. But I think that your podcast will stand out from everyone else's. And, um, you know, I just, I pray that your relationship with God will continue to grow. It has to. And I pray that, you know, even with you guys here, I pray that, you know, if there's something that I hope you learned something today and for you guys to understand that God, there's a God who loves you and uh, Jesus that died for you on the cross so that you can live in freedom and that your sins could be forgiven and that you can walk in holiness and righteousness and make it to the other side. (laughs) That I love that. Real quick, plug all your information, mm-hmm. social media, all that, and where so can, uh, my where can social, everyone check you out? Uh, Instagram, um, it's the Bible Girl Pod, and then I, my my personal page is Alicia Santangelo. But follow me on the Bible Girl Pod. Uh, my YouTube is currently I haven't really filmed anything yet to put on there, but you oh, can find all my to. yeah yeah I will respectfully. <laughs> yeah, so it's the Bible Girl Pod. If you don't mind following, I'm holding me. her accountable on that. By the yes. way, yes. Like I'm gonna be in a text message saying that like, where's the episode? You, you know, know what? I've had um I've been in a, a time period like I was saying mm-hmm. of like rest, mm-hmm. and then my sister just got married in these last like okay. like last month, so mm-hmm. it's just been a lot of very hectic. But I do plan because I got the neon light that says the Bible girl. There you go. And I just have to set Did it you up. You see, she already doing the branding. Yeah. She already got the branding, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I'm here for it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank though. you so much. No, thank honestly, you, thank you. Viva Italia. Yes, yeah? Forza Italia. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy man, you're good. good.